restore the sacred names and the proper terms such as Elohim instead of God back into the scriptures they bring forth clarity notice the following John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yahweh and the word was Elohim he was in the beginning with Yahweh the word is Yahshua, the Messiah who became flesh. John 1, 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's look at, so they, they admit to you that when we restore the sacred names back into the scriptures, like they used to be, now all of a sudden he's not Jesus, and he's not God. Because this Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And did you know that the word God, and it doesn't matter what language you're speaking, the word God means the same thing. And they took it out. Because to them, he's not God. They go on to say, furthermore, in our English versions where we see God in the original Hebrew text is the word Elohim. When referencing the Father of the Son, the word Elohim has been incorrectly translated as God. God is an appropriate interpretation when referencing false gods. However, it is a poor choice when referencing the Father of the Son. The appropriate translation when referencing the Father of the Son would be Mighty One or Mighty Ones. Elohim is generally plural depending on the context in which it was used. You know what, you know what they believe? They believe that Jesus was a God. Sort of like the Jehovah's Witness New World Translation. They actually say, and the word was a God. The sacred name people, and even some, not all, of the Hebrew Roots people, claim that Jesus was not divine. He was not God Almighty. He was sort of like an emanation from God. Let me show you this. Yahshua was with his father before the creation of the world. Yahshua was Elohim, the mighty one, in the likeness of his father. This is not polytheism wherein you have two or more heads, two or more gods on par with one another. This is a father and son relationship, one head, uh, the father. Yahweh is greater than Yahshua even though Yahshua is Elohim. Boy, they just don't like Jesus who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That's what this says. They say, and they admit that the reason why they changed the names was because it makes Jesus look like he's God, and he's not. It makes Jesus look like he's equal with the Father, but according to them, he's not. The Father's greater. So here is a doctrinal statement from one of the sacred namers. We declare that Yahshua the Messiah is the son of Yahweh. He came in the flesh, having been born of a virgin, being the Savior of the world. He is the man. Almost you notice this. He is the manifestation of Yahweh's love for mankind. His name means the salvation of Yahweh. Prior to coming in the flesh, Yahshua was a spirit being created in eternity. So two things here. Number one. Jesus was a created being. Number two, he was a manifestation of Yahweh's love, like an emanation from God. Very important. So if Jesus, and I want you to remember this, if Jesus is not God Almighty, who is he? Where did he come from? And again, we're going to go back to the roots of these guys. Which is not this. We already know that. It's Jewish mysticism all over again. We taught you last week about the Tetragrammaton, which means the sacred four-letter word. Now you're going to learn about, and you're going to see the connection here. See, because the Tetragrammaton was all about magic and being, being able to invoke God with your magic words. Now we're going to learn about an emanation from the Tetragrammaton, yod heh vah -Hey, that like has more power than that. It's called the Pentagrammaton. Five letters. Notice this. The Pentagrammaton is also the basis for the occult symbol known as the Pentagram. Stop right here. Pentagram. We've done this one before. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Pentag pentagram. I will be like the most high. And I'm here to tell you that there, Yahushua, 
is not this Bible's Jesus. It's not. Their tetragrammaton yod heh vah -Hey, is not the Jehovah God of this Bible. They're not the same. Their pentagrammaton is the Antichrist. Oh. Let me keep reading. Note that in the pentagram, each of the five points of the star may be visualized to represent a letter of the pentagrammaton and therefore represent the four elements plus spirit, which signifies that spirit rules over matter. The pentagram is also closely associated with the so-called divine ratio and so on. I want you to notice this pentagrammaton. You have the Hebrew letters yod, hey, starting with the word fire. That's a yod, water, hey, shin, spirit, air, and earth. Yod, hey, shin, va, hey. So in the sacred name cult, it's yod heh vah -Hey, and then it's yod heh shin vah -Hey. Now, I understand that in the original Hebrew, God's name was spelt with these Hebrew letters, yod heh vah -Hey. So I'm not saying that just saying yod heh vah -Hey or Jehovah or Yahweh makes you a magician or makes you an antichrist. What I'm saying to you is, is that since this doctrine is so prevalent, and since they didn't get it from this book, where did they get it from? They got it from the Kabbalah. They got it from Jewish mysticism. So let me explain this. The four, we learned about the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And the idea is, is that when they come together, that magic happens and a fifth element rises. There's a movie, Bruce Willis, called The Fifth Element. A fifth element rises up out of the four. Manley Hall said that the pentagram was the, the fifth rising out of the four. The yod heh vah -Hey, The shin coming out of the yod heh vah -Hey. An emanation or a representation of the yod heh vah -Hey, Specifically an emanation. That's what these guys said that they believed in their doctrine. It's witchcraft. The pentagram is a powerful symbol of protection and balance in which the lower points represent the four manifest elements. Each point and element is shown in its characteristic color above, um, yellow for air and uh, black for earth and, and so on. The, the elements correspond to the four Kabbalistic worlds and hence to the four Hebrew letters or sounds of the Tentragrammaton, the holy four-lettered name of God from the Bible. Remembering that Hebrew is read from right to left, this name, yod heh vah -Hey, is most properly transliterated as the the letters yod heh vah -Hey, but sometimes as Y-H-W-H or whatever. The Tentragrammaton is obtained by taking the lower four points of the pentagram counterclockwise in turn standing at the bottom right. They're, they're telling you a ritual here. The new word produced by placing shin in the middle of the yod heh vah -Hey is yod heh shin vah -Hey, usually transliterated as Y-H-S-H-V-H -H, or Yehoshua. While this was not an uncommon name and indeed was the name of the man who succeeded Moses as leader of Israel, Christian influence on the Western mystery tradition highlighted the fact that this is the name of Jesus in Hebrew. Thus, the pentagram illustrates the emanation of the pentagrammaton from the tetragrammaton. There it is. yod heh vah -Hey. This is why they insist that yod heh vah -Hey and yod heh shin vah -Hey must be pronounced. This is why they insist on it. They're not going to tell you that. This is why they insist on it. It all goes back to the Zohar, which many of them admit is on par with the Word of God. Jewish mysticism. See this, see this character here? It's called Adam Kadmon in the Kabbalah. Adam Kadmon is a fusion of Adam and Eve together. He's a fusion of male and female together. Oh, you mean you really believe that God is both male and female too? Not according to this. That God is Baphomet. So now, let's go back to the sacred name's doctrinal statements. We already saw that Christ, they believe, is an emanation from God. But he's not God. Not God. They don't believe the Holy Spirit is God either. Look at what they say concerning... Now remember... Earth, air, fire, and water, and the emanation that comes out of them is spirit. Look at what they said. We declare that the Holy Spirit is the power from on high. It is not a being. It is a spirit force that proceeds from Almighty Yahweh. 
That's what they say. Now, this Bible says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That's what this says. This is why they have to get you to get this out of the way by telling you it's not right. Now, all, that's, all those verses are terrible. All they, they've ruined the whole Bible. Get it out. Move it out of the way. Here we have, a, we have a better Bible for you. That's what Ahab said to Naboth about the vineyard. So they're admitting, they're admitting in their doctrinal statements that they are in line with the Kabbalistic idea that both Jesus and the Spirit are not God. They are an, emi an emanation, imitation. They are an emanation from God. Thus, the Spirit element that proceeds out of the four. That's witchcraft. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. By the way, these guys also, they have a problem with Jesus being God. They have a problem with spirit being God. They have a problem with this Bible. They have a huge problem with the eternal lake of fire punishment. They have a huge problem with that. Here's their doctrinal statement. We declare that the wages of sin is death. The first death is that of the flesh and lasts until the resurrection, while the second death is total destruction in the lake of fire and is reserved for those who, because of their wicked works, do not have their names written in the book of life. We find the doctrine of never dying immortal soul to be foreign to the scriptures. This was the first lie told by Satan to Eve. And when a person dies physically, they lose the breath of life and remain in a state of unconscious rest until they're resurrected. Yeshua is the only one who ascended into heaven. So they're basically telling you that once you go to the lake of fire, that's it, you're done. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So we've understood now their doctrine. We understood also that this Bible says that Jesus is Lord and God and that the proper the proper representation of the yod Hey vah He, according to the inspiration of God himself is Lord I don't argue with God I don't tell God he's wrong I don't tell These guys here, the ones shooting at me, they say that I'm a Bible worshiper and thus an idolater. I don't deny that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. My Savior has a name written on him, the Word of God. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you. They are spirit. So you know what? This book is my absolute final authority. And it is the word of God. And I bow. I am humbled in the presence of this book. And you can just see the scathing hatred. That these guys have for this one little book. They despise it. They hate it. And so they would have you believe that actually that their, their words are better than these words. See, there's, when it all boils down to it, there's really only two religions in the whole world. I know, this, well, there's Islam and Buddhism and Sikhism and all this stuff. No, no, no. There's really only, according to the Bible, there's only two religions in the world. There is Bible Christianity. And I'm one of these that believes that you have to believe the Bible to be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If you deny the words, you deny that Jesus is Lord. It's that simple. That's what this book says. So if you are watching this and you don't like that I said that, then you keep up your attack on this book because that's where I got it from.